Hi everyone, and welcome to a very weird video, but it's one that I thought was worth making to dispel some weird claims that apparently made it onto televised news in India, which treated them as factual, coming from an amateur astronomer named Jagmohan Saxena or Jagmohan Saxena. It's rather inconsistent regarding whether Jag and Mohan are one name or two names. But this is a man who claims to have found evidence for dinosaurs on the moon. Okay, so you might be sat there thinking, what? Dinosaurs on the moon? How could dinosaurs possibly be on the moon? How could they possibly get to the moon? And you'd be right to think that. So, let's have a look at the evidence that Mr. Saxena provides. In three papers published in dodgy predatory journals that clearly have no peer review process whatsoever. In the first of these papers, Saxena claims that he has found possible evidence for a past advanced civilization on the moon. In addition to a supposed T-Rex skull, two Parasaurolophus skeletons, a so-called pterodactyl skeleton, a literal dragon skeleton, a skeleton of protoceratops, and the skulls of two humans or humanoid aliens. So, considering that you need to be able to carefully examine and measure and compare the remains of a dinosaur with its relatives, to be able to assign it to a known genus and species, or to describe it as a new species, these remains must have been imaged at a very high quality, right? We're talking at least a centimetre scale. So how did Mr. Saxena do that? Well, he used the Moon Mineralogy Mapper, a NASA spectrometer which was a part of the Chandrayaan-1 Moon Impact Probe. I've attached a link to the probe's website, but basically this probe orbited the moon as a satellite between 2008 and 2009, and the spectrometer mapped the moon's mineralogy, mostly at low resolution. But it did manage to get quite a lot of high resolution imagery. It was this probe's data that famously found evidence for water on the moon locked in minerals, as is discussed in this article. But, when I say high-resolution imagery, how high am I actually talking about? A few centimetres per pixel, perhaps? A few millimetres? Something that you can actually use to describe a large fossil from? No, that would take up an obscene amount of data for an entire moon. So how high is that resolution? Well, According to the paper describing the mapper by R. O. Green and colleagues in the Journal of Geophysical Research, which I've attached in the description, this high resolution involves one reading, effectively one pixel, for every 70 meters. So that's one pixel per unit of area that is much bigger than any of the dinosaur skeletons that exist on the planet. Oops! <laughs> so, anyway, I can practically hear you thinking, maybe these are mega kaiju-sized dinosaurs that somehow went to the moon and were able to reach enormous sizes due to the lower gravity on the moon. But if these things were evolving so drastically that they got so much bigger and evolved to become so different to how they were on our Earth, we wouldn't be calling them by their known genera and species anymore. Anyway, let's just look at the evidence that Mr. Saxena presents and see what it looks like. Oh. Oh. Dear. <clears throat> not only does this paper not actually show the so-called pterodactyl skeleton or the humanoid skulls, but the supposed Parasaurolophus is 
it's uh, just sort of a smudge. I can definitely see this being an interesting mineralogical or geological feature, but a fossil? And something that's diagnostic of the genus Parasaurolophus? I don't even slightly see it. But also very cool for Mr. Saxon and not adding a scale bar to the image, so that we can't see that it's actually tens of kilometers across. Okay, so that doesn't even slightly look like a Parasaurolophus skeleton, but let's have a look at the so-called T-Rex skull. Um, okay, this doesn't look like a skull at all, or anything biological, but but what about the Protoceratops, huh? These are just circles. Okay, okay, so we can't see anything resembling a Protoceratops, but what about the dragon that he names? Um, these just look like some kind of complex folding. I don't see any distinct visible bones here at all. These are just sort of, you know, wavy lines and smudges. And last but not least, the so-called carved swastika, which Saxena claims was the evidence for an advanced civilization. Now, I can see some hills, but I can't see any straight lines or evidence for carving, at least no exactly straight lines. And to me, this just looks like some hills and some craters. Hello everyone, we're halfway through the video, and if you watched our last video, you know what that means. It's time to play Rockman. What's Rockman? This is Rockman. Rockman is the sentient weapon which I shall use to take over the world. These letters are my summoning spell that I will use to create him. This summoning spell is a geological phrase, and if you can guess it before me, you can stop me from summoning Rockman and taking over the world. This is the first time we are playing this game properly. In the last episode, I showed you the list of letters and asked you to guess a letter. Remember, every time we do this, the most upvoted letter gets picked. So after we've done this game, write your guess in the comments below for what you think the next letter is going to be. The most upvoted letter with a total of four upvotes was, drumroll please, E. Now, is E in Rockman, or am I going to have to place the first rock? No, I'm not going to place the first rock. You got it. So, where does E go? It goes here. Behold, the first letter is down, and I might be defeated. But we'll see. Remember that if you do defeat me to suggest ideas for a forfeit. Not that you'll need one, because I am going to destroy you with Rockman. Hope you all enjoy the rest of the video. Let's get back into it. This paper also provided no mechanism by which these dinosaurs, pterosaurs, and humanoids could have made it to the moon, how they were able to survive on the moon, and how they were able to reach such colossal sizes that they would be seen by a sensor that has a 70 meter pixel resolution. Anyway, after that inexplicable paper, Jagmohan wrote another paper. You're joking. Not another one? With co-author Professor Hari Mohan Saxena, an immunologist with a genuinely impressive research record, whom I can only assume is related to Jagmohan, given their surnames. Why a researcher with this level of prestige is publishing on space dinosaurs now, I have no idea, but hey, at least he has a hobby. 
The second paper is much shorter than the first, and while it didn't show any of the missing skeletons that the first one reported on but didn't show, it did report on some supposed ritualistic burial pits that had the skulls of large animals inside them at their exact centers. Now again, these might be interesting geological features, but to be picked up on the sensor at the level of detail they have been, they would need to be several kilometers wide. Anyway, let's just have a look at these supposed skulls, and wait, hang on, one of these skulls is the exact same feature that you said in your last paper was an entire Parasaurolophus skeleton. What is it? Is it a Parasaurolophus skeleton, or is it an alien skull? Make your mind up! We then have these other supposed skulls, which, um... Yeah, let's just, let's just say... I have no idea what to say here. Um, <laughs> I have no idea what to say here. Anyway, now we enter the final paper that these two astrobiological geniuses have published so far. This one claims to have found evidence for an actual dinosaur egg with an embryo that contains a beak, limbs, and claws. Again, this is at a resolution of 70 meters per pixel, so kaiju-sized, huge supposed dinosaur. Now, do you see a dinosaur-like shape here? Honestly, to me, it looks more like a giant insect, but also definitely not one because it would have to be several kilometers wide. I now hand you over to paleontologist and friend of the channel, Sky McDavid. These are definitely not dinosaurs. I can sort of see how if you squint the first few figures from Saxena and Saxena, vaguely resemble an oviraptorosaur embryo and a ceratopsian skull, but that's pareidolia from our pattern-seeking brains, the same way we see faces in power outlets. As DJ already pointed out, these photos were taken from a satellite orbiting the moon, and so this so-called egg is about 20 kilometers long, which is ridiculously impossible for a dinosaur egg. Even the largest dinosaurs hatched from relatively small eggs. The largest dinosaur eggs currently known were laid by the Oviraptorosaur Bebe Long Sinensis, and despite being up to 8 meters long as an adult, its eggs were less than 45 centimeters in length. Titanosaurs, the group that includes the largest terrestrial animals ever, hatched from eggs smaller than a basketball. Saxena and Saxena produced their figures by taking NASA's images and putting them through digital filters, which makes it very easy to see features that aren't there. In this way, it's very similar to David Peter's infamous so-called digital graphic separation method, in which he amplifies random shadows and camera noise, then claims to discover new features that aren't actually there. Looking at the original image from NASA, Saxena and Saxena's figure 1 is clearly just an impact crater. This is even more obvious when you overlay the photo with topographical data from the same satellite. The crater is over 1,500 meters deep. Saxena and Saxena's second image, the one that looks vaguely like a ceratopsian skull, is also an impact crater, about 40 kilometers long and 3 kilometers deep. As they point out, it's located near the moon's south pole. Arguably, one of the moon's most recognizable features is that its south pole is littered with craters. So, these alleged dinosaurs are impact craters, and the other things that Saxena and Saxena have claimed to identify on the moon are various geological features easily explained by abiotic factors. But that's not the only problem with this disaster of a paper. The publisher, Marsland Press, is a vanity press that publishes anything for a fee, and most of their fake journals are named to be confusingly similar to prestigious legitimate journals. The Journal of American Science imitates the American Journal of Science, Stem Cell imitates Cell Stem Cell, Nature and Science imitates both Nature and Science simultaneously, and the New York Science Journal where this nonsense was published 
might be copying the annals of the New York Academy of Sciences. The names that they propose, Lunasaurus Xenii and Chondrosaurus Polaris, are incorrectly formulated, lack a proper diagnosis, and they don't even say which one is which, though Polaris is presumably the one located near the south pole of the moon. Thankfully, Saxena and Saxena don't fulfill the requirements of the International Code of Zoological Nomenclature, so their names are irrelevant. Also, for an ego trip, they named one of their new species after themselves. The only other example of that which I'm aware of is Ray Hoser, an infamous taxonomic vandal. So, in short, these ostensible dinosaur eggs with embryos are impact craters, and the people who wrote this have no idea what they're talking about. But that doesn't mean there were never dinosaurs on the moon. In fact, there were dinosaurs on the moon. Or, to be more specific, dinosaur muscle tissue. During the Apollo program, astronauts were sent to the moon with food, including several chicken dishes and turkey. And birds are, of course, living dinosaurs. So, in summary, despite what you may have heard, no. There is no evidence for dinosaurs on the moon, nor for a human or alien civilization that hunted dinosaurs and ritualistically put their skulls in the middle of pits, nor that the moon has ever been habitable to life. It is certainly possible that some dinosaur bones might, potentially, have been thrown into space and reached the moon during the end Cretaceous meteorite impact, But it is incredibly unlikely that that happened. And even if it did happen, we wouldn't be able to see those bones with a sensor that has a resolution of 70 meters. When I grow up, I want to go to the moon! (laughs) Why wait? I hope you enjoyed this video and found it interesting. Huge thanks go out to my Patreon supporters, Jean and Eric Feenstra. My next big video will be the pseudoscience of Jordan Peterson, which I've been working on for quite a while, and I expect it will be several weeks before that is ready. But between now and then, we will presumably be having my 1000 subscriber special video. Now, as you may have seen from my community post and social media, I have been putting up an Ask Me Anything anonymous link so that you can, you know, ask me any questions. The idea behind the 1000 subscriber special video is that we're going to do a bit of a Q&A, I'll answer any questions you guys have, I'll react to some of you guys' um, best and worst comments on my videos, um, and we'll go through some fun geology and paleontology memes. Um, I hope you enjoyed the 1000 subscriber special, should be a fun one, and I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope you enjoy all of the many upcoming videos that I'm working on, and will be working on in the near future. Much love, and thanks. Bye!